we're going to talk in this movie about an inertia chassis dyno. With, uh, in the previous movies, we talked about inertia engine dynos. And I'm just going to hit some of the main differences when you're working with a chassis dyno instead of an engine dyno. Chassis means you got the vehicle on the, on the dyno and the back tires on the roller. So if you click on your dyno specs, first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick out one of the chassis dyno types down here at the bottom of this option. Chassis dyno or chassis dyno with no engine RPM. This is like what we had with engine with no clutch. And this would be used if you uh, did not have a good engine RPM signal. It could be a diesel, it could be a just um, distributorless ignition or something that's just not cooperating. You can't get a good engine RPM signal. So let's try this one first. The plain old chassis dyno where it assumes you're going to measure engine RPM. And it's going to go up here. And what you're going to do, and you can see in this blue section here, this main wheel, the roller, the outside diameter is, is very important because this is how it's going to figure out mile an hour that your vehicle's traveling. And with most rollers, you are, first off, they're going to be fairly wide. Even with a motorcycle, let's say it's going to be uh, 20 inches wide. And if it's a 23 inch OD and zero ID inside diameter, that means it's solid. Typically, chassis dynos don't have that. They might be a 21 inch ID like pictured here. This is the cross section. That would mean you got one inch thick walls on this thing, and here is the inertia for that. And uh, you might have a couple of end plates. Let's say you got, uh, you could do it any, any way you want to do it, but let's say we're going to include a component here. And let's say you got two end plates, and they would be 21 inch, I'm sorry, 21 inch OD, and a two inch ID. And if you got two of them, one way to do that is you could add both thicknesses together. And if they're one inch thick, say you got, they are two inches thick, one inch on each side. And then you got your shaft here, which would be zero and uh, two inch OD and maybe 30 inches long out of steel. And these end plates are steel also. And see, here is a little drawing of what these components would look like. Not exactly drawn exactly how your dyno would look, but just gives you some idea of everything seems to be entered correctly. And here you got your total inertia for this chassis dyno. Now, if you're going to estimate how much inertia is required, we've done this before in a previous movie. But let's say, um, I won't go into this too much, but let's say you got um, 60 foot-pounds as the total, is the average torque. And again, we're going to start at 3,000 RPM. We're going to go to 8,500 RPM like before, and we want that to take at least five seconds. Uh, but here's the important thing here, this mile an hour for a 23-inch diameter roller. If you are running an ATV, something that's really geared down, or a four-wheel drive truck, or something that can't go very fast, this mile an hour is way too high. Um, you're going to have to go maybe with a, a 9 to 1 gear reduction, or maybe in an ATV, you know, it goes 80 miles an hour, uh, maybe an 8 to 1 gear reduction. And what that's saying, if you do a pull, do a run, where you're going to top out at only 73 miles an hour, and this takes into account all sorts of things, like tire size, gear ratio, all that stuff. It goes just purely by mile an hour. Um, it knows that this is the dyno wheel RPM, your roller RPM, to give you 73 miles an hour. Uh, and you can see you need a lot of inertia for this geared down vehicle. If you can, or if you try to run this thing in second gear, if you go with a less of a gear reduction, you can see here you're going to be at 145 miles an hour at the end of your run, which is probably too high for a lot of things. But let's go a five to one. And you can see here we're going to have a max wheel RPM at, at 8,500 RPM with this five to one gear ratio of um, 1700 rpm which is equal to 116 mile an hour so maybe that's your particular gear uh, vehicle in fourth gear or something 116 mile an hour the point i'm trying to make here is you will design for a certain mile an hour that your vehicles will achieve in the top end and the higher you you allow this to go the less inertia is required 
if we only if we had to stop this thing at you can see here the current inertia is 400 and that's what's required about 400 pounds per square inertia when we went with this nine to one gear ratio reduction where it only topped out at 65 miles an hour either something that's very geared down or you're choosing a very low gear like second gear you need a lot more inertia to have it take five seconds so i'm just illustrating some points there now you can see here back at the dyno spec screen if you say chassis dyno this is grayed out it's not being used that's because it's going to figure it out from the engine rpm but if you say here i've got no engine rpm i'm going to back out of here so do you want to save it yes save it as the master say yes uh, I'm going to show you how the program would figure out what the uh, what the dyno RPM is, or I'm sorry, what the engine RPM is from the dyno RPM. And it's done here in something we haven't talked about yet, test conditions. This is things like the weather, what correction factor to use and such. And down here is a test vehicle summary. Here is what determines what the engine RPM is compared to the dyno RPM. And let's say you don't know what that relationship is. I know some dynos have this calibration factor, and we can do that too, where you just spin up the dyno and say, here's the engine RPM, here's the dyno RPM, the relationship, the gear ratio is 7.36, and just type it in and go. We do it a little differently. We do it saying that if you know what some of these specs are. Let's say you know the trans gear you're running is one to one. You're running it in, in this case probably fourth gear, not overdrive. You know the final drive ratio and you know the tire radius, the drive tire radius. And if you don't you can calculate it from something like this little let's say we know we got 225, 60, 16 there. It tells you that it's a 12.9 radius. And if you use that, this is all you need to know. You can just type the numbers in, and it will then, from those numbers, figure out what the relationship is between that roller of 23-inch diameter and your engine going through this stuff. But let's say you don't know this. Let's say you don't know uh, what the tire size is. You, said you do know the gear ratio. Well, typically, the tire size you will know. But let's say you know a trans ratio. If you don't know one of these, or if you don't know any of them, what you can do is just type in two of them and figure out what the third one would be. So let's go over here and just type in something and say they're just really big guesses. And then what you do is you go over and click on this measure button. And it says, what spec do you want to adjust? Like of the three, which one do you have the least confidence that you know? And let's say it's trans ratio. So what you can do is you can type in some relationship between engine and dyno roller RPM in this particular trans gear and that could be from running it watching the vehicle tack and watching the dyno spec screen in your data mite program or you could do it right now right now spin up that dyno wheel and if we're getting an engine RPM it'll come through so let's try to click on that button little hourglass comes up it's going to go out and it's going to measure what's happening. There it found the engine RPM and it found your dyno RPM. Now the engine RPM it found was zero probably because you didn't have it plugged in. Don't have any engine RPM coming in. But while you were spinning this thing, you were watching the tack and you said, it's spinning 2400 RPM. Well, the dyno roller, which it just measured right now, is 7.76. And that would calculate out of a trans ratio of 1.13. Now that may not be right. But what it is, is it puts this relationship of these three things in the correct relationship to give you whatever that RPM, I think it was 2300 RPM, with a dyno roller RPM of 774, I think it was something like that. So it might be a little bit more of a roundabout way, but it's much more flexible in that it can, if you know the three settings here, you can just type them in and not go through that. Uh, if you don't know, you pick type in two, make a good guess at two, and figure out what the third one is, just like I did there. Now, another option you got here is you can save what we did here. Does it already exist? Do you want to overwrite it? Say no. And then it says you got to type this in. So let's say this is some uh, Kawasaki 500. I'm not sure what that means. But let's say that's what it is. It represents that to you. You click on save. And now, if we, we could open this, 
you can see now Kawa 500 is in there as one of the options for you to pick. Now, this is useful because maybe in a year you might have another one of these Kawasaki's come on, and you can just go in there and choose this or choose maybe one of these Mustangs, and you're going to build up this library of settings for yourself so you know automatically what to use. So anyway, that's what you can do for, uh, for figuring out engine RPM from dyno RPM, the relationship between the two. Now, if you are measuring engine RPM, this information isn't nearly as critical. Um, what this would be used for then is to figure out tire or clutch and converter slip, just like um, the gear ratios used when you're measuring engine RPM with an engine dyno is just used to figure out your clutch slip. So if you're saying you are measuring engine RPM, not so critical. If you're not measuring the engine RPM, this stuff is very critical.